Welcome to more movie plots and spoilers ahead. At a hidden temple in the Ishikari Mountains of Japan, Princess Kasumi is notified of her brother's untimely death by his best friend Hayabusa. Not wanting to believe the rumors, Kasumi decides to leave the temple in search of him, even against Hayabusa's warning that she will be labeled an outcast, a shinobi. The royal guard confronts her but are all too cowardly to stand up to the young rebel, except for her protector and brother's love interest Ayane. She states that if Kasumi leaves the temple she is honor bound to kill her, but allows her to leave for now. The warrior princess uses her sword as a springboard to leap over the temple wall and off the mountain, activating a wingsuit to escape. As she glides away she catches a batarang being used as an invitation to a combat tournament called DOA. While pounding away at her sword, Ayane is then inevitably informed by the head of their clan to follow the disgraced Kasumi and kill her. Spending her day working out on her yacht is professional wrestler Tina Armstrong, arguing with her father on the phone about not wanting to wrestle as she feels she has more potential. When suddenly a gang of pirates show up and try to hijack the beautiful yacht. With them not wanting to use guns as to not damage their prize, Tina defends her property by defeating them with her bare hands and throwing them overboard. After finishing the Liu Kang looking leader of the gang, the last pirate makes the wise decision to throw himself off instead. Just then another DOA shuriken pierces the side of her boat, inviting Tina to the party. In a hotel room in Hong Kong, the assassin and master thief Christy Allen comes out of the shower to a number of police officers wanting to question her. She begins to get dressed slowly in front of the police to put them off guard, then kicks an officer's gun into the air. She proceeds to disarm and defeat all three of them within the time it takes for the gun to land, catching it and using the final cop to do up her bra before knocking him out. With more police waiting downstairs she robs an old man on the elevator for his trench coat and stuffs him in his own suitcase, then walks straight out the front door and flees the scene on her motorcycle, while her partner in crime Maximilian Marsh watches her leave. To no surprise Christy receives her own invite in the form of a damaged windscreen. Shortly after the three girls are amongst a number of invited fighters on a flight to DOA Island, watching an introduction video by Helena Douglas where she references a $10 million prize for winning all of your upcoming fights. Tina's father base also received an invite, as well as Hayabusa and Christie's partner Max, who Christie says abandoned her at the hotel in Hong Kong for the police to find and wonders how he even got an invitation since he can't fight. A Muay Thai style fighter and DJ named Zach mocks the pro wrestlers for their profession, before Helena comes back on screen to inform the passengers that in order to reach DOA they must jump right now with parachutes, and make it to the compound by sundown or else be disqualified. So they gear up and do so, with Kasumi, Tina, and Christy all coincidentally landing close to one another. Unfortunately being at the base of a cliff, they must climb a giant Buddha statue to the top and decide to make a race of it. Kasumi realizes that it's getting late and that they won't make it to the compound unless they work together, so they throw each other up in unison. When they arrive at the top Kasumi falls, but the other two catch her and pull her back up, only to have to kill each other later anyway. They are greeted by Helena who takes them into the DOA compound, where the fighters all meet the head of Helena's father's company, Dr. Victor Donovan, who explains away some of the history of the tournament to the fighters. They are all taken one by one and analyzed in a lab to record their abilities, just being another scene added in for a few more bikini shots. Helena will be competing in DOA as well and is being overseen by Weatherby, Donovan's assistant who operates all of the technical equipment and has a crush on the late owner's daughter. They are all finally injected with nanobots to download data while on the island. The next day the fighters are all issued with bracelets that track their progress and show the names of their next opponents. They all train off their jet lag with their respective styles while Helena is shown to just be roller skating around the compound. But she is the first to fight, and manages to defeat her opponent with relative ease. The first round of fights begins with Christy and Hayabusa both picking up wins, as well as two other competitors named Bayman and Jen Fu. Kasumi thinks about the time her brother Hayate saved her from a gang of rebels who kidnapped her, Using his acupuncture needles he subdued each goon with a single needle to a nerve. After saving her she remembers Hayate receiving a DOA shuriken inviting him to the tournament that he never returned from. It was then that he made Hayabusa Kasumi's protector, and they soon develop feelings for each other. Before her first fight, Donovan visits Kasumi who asks him about her brother and the previous year's tournament. Donovan explains that Hayate was thrown from a balcony off a cliff but his body never recovered saying that he was defeated by a roided out flexible killing machine named Leon. So Donovan decides to match her up against her brother's supposed killer in the very first round. But she is jumped in her bedroom by Ayane, who tries to honor her clan and kill the traitor. Leon suddenly enters the room so Ayane runs away, leaving it to the muscle-bound fighter to kill Kasumi instead, who begins to take all of her shots and throw her around the room. 
Christy is visited by Max who is planning on stealing the prize money once he finds a way into the vault, but after getting back on her good side Kasumi and Leon break through the wall into their room. With Kasumi now easily defeating the exhausted Leon, she realizes that he could not possibly have beaten Hayate. Down at the hot tub Zack begins trying to put the moves on a disinterested Tina, who tells him to close his eyes and sneaks away, right as Kasumi kicks Leon off the balcony and into the hot tub. After now moving on to Helena, Max defeats Bayman with dumb luck when the big oaf knocks a statue over onto himself. While getting some acupuncture Tina faces her first opponent in the form of her father, so they make house rules that whoever falls in the water loses. After a long-winded balancing act and a few bites, Tina eventually knocks Bass into the water and out of the competition. But he's a proud father. With the semi-final stage of the tournament next, all combatants take time out to lounge around on the beach. Max is shown to be getting close to Helena to find out the password to Donovan's safe, but Christy gets jealous and asks her to play some volleyball to split the two up. So a volleyball tournament takes place down on the beach with Kasumi and Tina against Helena and Christy. Hayabusa gets the go-ahead from his princess to explore Donovan's compound for her brother, whilst Donovan is attending the game. We get another long segment of the girls jumping around in bikinis, this time not just for entertainment purposes but also as a reference to the video game Dead or Alive Beach Volleyball. The two teams go back and forth in a battle of wits, but the game and every man's enjoyment is abruptly ended when a throwing star pops the ball. Seeing that Ayane is calling her out, Kasumi goes to the bamboo jungle where they battle off the record. They fight each other while cutting down half the forest, and Kasumi begs Ayane to help her find Hayate, but Ayane tells her that he is dead and that she should come to terms with that. Kasumi points out that when Hayate deserted the clan she never tried to assassinate him and that she must love him. But the princess disarms Ayane with the old bamboo octopus trick, before their fight ends with the arrival of the other girls, prompting Ayane to grab her sword and fly away. Hayabusa makes his way through the compound kicking the crap out of all the guards who challenge him, but is soon captured by one of the building's booby traps. Back at the party, Tina tells Zack that they are matched up against each other in the politest way possible. And the two begin their fight at the Forbidden Square with the idea of staying inside. After a lot of stance poses and a few strikes in between, Tina's knocked off the stage, but manages to hold on and climb back up to defeat Zack. Helena and Christy are matched up and have an overly dramatic beach fight in the rain, full of slow motion butt cinematography during their back and forth fight to the death. Christy manages to defeat Helena with the effective shin kick and slam technique, progressing to the semi-finals of the tournament. Christy noticed a tattoo on the back of Helena's neck during the fight and writes it down after, giving both her and Max the vault's location and passcode. Before the next round Kasumi wonders where Hayabusa has gone to and goes looking for him, being accompanied by Tina and Christy who are just bored. They search Donovan's office and find a secret elevator to his lab, however with the man watching everything they've been doing, he uses Hayabusa to lure them into a trap. Weatherby comforts and upset Helena over the loss to Christy, revealing to her that he overheard her father objecting to Donovan's plans for his nanobots, and was killed for it. Once again overhearing this, Donovan sends his security forces to kill them both. Helena defends Weatherby and begins to fight the 20 armed assassins, all by herself since Weatherby is knocked into the bushes for the whole thing. With the guard's numbers withered down to only one, the brave computer nerd shows back up and cracks him in the face, saving Helena and breaking his fist. The two sneak into the compound and Weatherby spills the beans to Helena. Weatherby made a machine for Donovan to harvest the nanobots from the four best DOA fighters, giving the wearer of a pair of sunglasses the ability to predict and adapt to any fighting style, but he had no idea he would use it against the fighters' wills. Donovan downloads the fighters' abilities onto the glasses, then reveals that he captured Hayate alive one year ago for this very moment. Being the best fighter that Donovan has ever seen, he frees Hayate to test the DOA program. He broadcasts the power of the technology to buyers around the world and challenges Hayate to a fight, in which the glasses allows him to effectively predict every move he makes. He has his way with him, then kicks him through the wall of the compound, breaking out the front of the Buddha's head but being caught by Ayane before falling to his death. Donovan attempts to send the DOA program to the buyers after successfully showing its potential, but Weatherby hacks in from the security room and stops him, following it up with a call to the CIA. Donovan tries to flee the compound and comes face to face with Helena, looking for revenge for her father's murder she holds him off from reaching the security room, but he easily downloads her moves and defeats her. He then knocks Weatherby out and sets the compound to self-destruct in a matter of minutes. Meanwhile Max having followed Helena and Weatherby through the secret tunnel entrance, finds the vault housing all of Donovan's money. He uses Christie's drawing of Helena's tattoo to decipher the code and enter the numbers, gaining access to 100 million in cash. 
but Bayman arrives having been sent by Donovan and gets his sweet revenge on Max, before collecting all of his boss's savings and fleeing with him like a pack mule. Weatherby unlocks the harvest pods for the four semi-finalists right as Donovan is passing through and they all begin to attack him. With all the fighters freed and Helena waking up, the girls all chase down Donovan together as he attempts to escape, while Hayabusa holds off Bayman. He is successful for a while until he begins to get choked out, but gets saved by pipe wielding Max and Weatherby. In a 4 on 1 the girls begin to beat Donovan, but he manages a comeback and almost kills some of the team when they fall, but they are saved by Ayane and Hayate standing a few levels below them. After a tough fight Christy gets a good kick in on Donovan, managing to find the flaw and using glasses over goggles, they fall off. With the island's self-destruct sequence being irreversible, Hayabusa and Weatherby have to drag Max away from the money. Hayate then uses the foot knuckle to stun a fleeing Donovan, and Kasumi finishes him off by stabbing a needle into his neck, completely paralyzing him. With seconds left on the countdown Weatherby Max and Hayabusa take an escape hatch from the control center to get out, while all the other survivors jump from the cliffside into the water below to escape the explosion, and Donovan remains frozen to be consumed by the flames. A few minutes later and the same pirates arrive to the scene looking to make a score, but just get rolled by Tina again and have their boat stolen. The group reunite over the water and escape DOA Island as newly formed couples, except for Tina but I think she'll be fine. Sometime later, the five females band together to take on the warrior guards on the steps of Kasumi's palace. And the movie ends. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more.